only get a snippet of it. We think yoga is just postures. But in reality, yoga is a vast system. It's a really incredible scientific technology um, for an integral evolution, meaning we evolve our minds, our bodies, our spirits, our heart, every aspect of the human being that we know now in our current way of being as we are today, and everything that just remains as a potential. That is also something that yoga explores. So it's a, it's a scientific methodology in the sense that you inquire within. And that's very different than neuroscience. Neuroscience is something, and just Western science in general, is like, show me and I'll believe it. I have to see it to believe it. Um, in a sense of seeing it physically, like seeing it as an object outside of you, of your body, something you can manipulate. Yoga is, the instrument of yoga is not so much what you could do in a laboratory with cells and measure with instruments, but it has more to do with um, in, um, introspection as a way of looking at it. This is what we do every day when we look at our experience. So it's a system of various techniques for hacking our capacities to develop our maximum potential and to develop all sorts of higher qualities. More humility, more insight, more love, more compassion, all these sorts of things yoga can do. And it's, you know, there's many techniques that overlap. There's uh, asana or postures, breathing, which we'll cover a little bit of today. Um, I teach both, you know, I've taught both and I've had experience with both. There's also just meditation and insight and abiding and awareness. There are visual tools like yantras, you know, so art is incorporated into yoga. And the also tantra, uh, sexual and intimacy practices are involved in yoga as well. Um, and much, much, much more devotional practices, singing, chanting. Yoga is more of how you do something rather than what you're actually doing. Is it, are you doing it with awareness? Or are you doing it with a special sort of light bulb in the back of your head that knows that you are looking to maximize and harness your full potential as a human being. Um, so again, the mind is not the brain. So empiricism and looking at something like neuroscience does is not the same as um, introspection, which yoga does. So, however, scientific research lately has been very uh, good at starting to accept first-person experience as a valuable method of inquiry. So a lot of people are studying now meditators in labs and putting brain, um, you know, machines on them, putting them neck on their eyes and under EEG analysis to analyze their brain waves, um, analyzing their heart rate, all sorts of things that are just basically, if you follow the trend long enough, you realize that neuroscience is in a way proving what meditators and yogis have known for thousands of years. So feel free to, you know, um, be a skeptic and just everything you hear about yoga and at the same time, uh, you know, take take a leap of faith into yoga, something that's been done for a long time. Um, and knowledge, internal introspective knowledge, is very different from information. Information garnered by science and inquiry is very different from what you know to yourself, connecting to your own heart and awareness and expanding your sense of compassion, love, insight in your own life as it's applied in real time. So we're not the brain. We are actually a combination of the mind uh, our brain, our nervous system, which is the mechanism for the process that is the mind, and we're also our relationships. So we're a shared process of knowledge. So we're not, I am not my brain. A lot of neuroscientists say, I am the brain. You are just your brain. Your emotion of love is just a bunch of biochemicals. Um, you may hear that, and that's fine, but I you know, I invite you to consider that just as a part of the whole truth, as not the whole truth, not everything. You know, you're much more than just a brain cell. Um, so, getting into the importance of the breath, why is the breath so important in the intersection of all these things? Breath work in yoga is called prana yama. Yama means management or control, prana means life force. And the main way that we harness all aspects of ourself, our mind, our nervous system, and our relationships is through our breath. Our breath is almost the primary food before we even intake water or food and whatever food we eat at our meals. Breath is the primary life force. Try holding your breath for in an hour and see if you live, you know. It's, so how you regulate your breath actually has a big influence on how your mind functions and how your heart functions, as we'll see. So the breath is the easiest access point for your subtle body. Your subtle body is something that you cannot actually see. It's 
what shapes your physical body, according to yogic knowledge. You, know? um, you can actually feel your subtle body as you start shifting your your breath, your physical um, sensation shifts, your heart rate shifts, your mind wave shifts, as I said. And what's doing that is your breath is accessing your subtle body, and your food also accesses your subtle body too, but we're not going to go into that. That's like another hour in of itself. So your whole body with a big B is a lot of covering, it's a lot of sheets and layers over your big awareness. Your awareness is actually infinite. You and I actually share the same awareness. We're the same thing. That's what's called the oneness, right? Recognizing that. Um, but we have all these different layers. And the heart felt sensations, the neurocognitive sensations are all different layers of them. So, so I'm going to take into account the breath is going to actually allow us to integrate all of those and allow us to access them at the same time. So, a little bit on the research, um, the background. Breath is usually a focus of meditation. It's a starting point for directing your mindful attention. Mindfulness just means, in a sense, um, placing your awareness on something and trying to be in the present moment as much as you can without doing, without letting the brain sort of run its normal loopy function of taking the past and anticipating the future. The breath is sort of a a focus for your meditation is a way to link what you're feeling in terms of what you're touching with your sensory organs. You're feeling your breath as it goes through your nostrils into your lungs. You're, you can even feel the oxygen. Everything you can feel into everything. So you can touch everything with your breath with your body and also the internal experience. The breath is going to allow you to integrate all those things. Um, so there's a lot of neuroscientific findings which suggest that the um, breath as a focal point allows us to see that there's an overlap in the circuitry between the mindful breathing circuitry, meaning what parts of the brain are activated during mindful breath and mindfulness in general, as well as our social circuitry, how we relate to other people. So there's something in the brain called mirror neurons. So if I see you throwing a football, your brain is being activated in a way that your perception and your motor skills are coordinated to actually throw the football. Um, and when I'm watching you, whether I'm interested in throwing the football or not, my way of relating to what you just did and feeling it as a human being is allowed by the presence of the mirror neurons, meaning my brain is actually activated in a very similar way to your brain. Even though I'm not throwing a football, if I see you throw a football, my brain is lighting up in very similar ways as to what yours is. So this is the beginning of empathy, as we'll see now, because basically there's parts of your brain, the superior temporal cortex on the right side, that links with these mirror neurons, that when I see action, I do a sensory simulation of, meaning I sort of feel what you're doing, in a way. This is also when you see someone be sad or happy, and you resonate with them, and you, it's contagious, it's because of this mirror neuron system. So this, these two parts of your brain integrate, it goes down into something called the insula, which is a part of your brain associated with just integration and consciousness. It's hard to put labels because your brain is a massive computer built of 100 billion neurons. Um, and then from the insula down into the brain stem, and from the brain, sorry, limbic system, then the brain stem. The limbic system has to do with your more um, instinctual, emotional stuff before it's processed by your cognitive mind. And then down into the brain stem, which controls bodily functions without you having to think about them, just automatic. And then down into your body. So when I see you for the football, or when I see you be excited about anything, and I relate to it using my vision, down into my brain, my body starts to feel what you're feeling. And in a sense, this is the beginning of our interpersonal attunement, and this is how we can resonate with someone. And from our own body, we go back up into that part, those parts of the brain with the mirror neurons and our systems communicate. So I can feel you without exactly analyzing and knowing your detail of all your experience, all the details of your experience. I can feel your body. And the more you do this with more relaxation, the more you can attune to anybody in many ways. So as you'll see throughout the rest of the day, connecting to heart-based awareness has a lot to do with syncing yourself with someone else's rhythms on a biological level and experiential level. Um, so mindful awareness circuitry in the brain is very similar to the social circuitry and what it's doing is actually harnessing the capacity for interpersonal attunement meaning you and I relate through feeling I see you do something I see you be some way I feel you 
mindful awareness is harnessing that and turning it into, instead of it be to be, me being between me and you, me and something else, it's going to be between the observer and me, the highest witness consciousness and who I consider myself to be. So by being mindful and mindful breathing, we establish a better awareness and relationship between different parts of ourselves. The bigger self, the part that is zoomed out, that it can't zoom out anymore, and it can only be aware of who you are in that moment, who you're being. So it's it's a way of being compassionate with yourself, in a sense. And the, this also links with parts of the brain uh, involved in executive functioning, meaning linking together many much information called the prefrontal cortex, this whole area here, is the largest in humans more than any other animals or any other beings on the planet. And that's the part of our brain that integrates and forms intelligent explanations for everything and justifies what we will